Hey guys, welcome to Dublin day four. As you can see, although I said day four, it is actually night time. I have just come, just been for dinner in the winding stair, but today we're going to have to have a vlog that's been a bit of a flashback. So I'm going to start walking back to my hotel. I am back in my hotel. Uh, so this morning I went to Kilmaine in jail, um, but they asked that you didn't take any video or audio, so obviously wanted to be respectful of that. Um, but I did take some pictures, which I will insert for anybody who's interested. This is the most iconic and instantly recognisable area of the jail. It's been used in a lot of films. One of the most recent was Paddington 2. It was used for the dance routine at the end with Hugh Grant. Although a film that I love as much as that one and that brings me as much joy as that one does being filmed here feels quite inappropriate. Some of the cells in this area are marked out with famous prisoners who have occupied them. So Eamon de Valera's cell is marked out. He was originally there in 1916. He was sentenced to be executed, but he had his sentence commuted, ended up being released in 1917. He was then back during the Civil War and was one of the last prisoners to leave in 1924 before the jail was shut for good. He was one of the first visitors to see it after the restorations had begun in the 60s, when he of course visited in his capacity as the President of Ireland. One of the other cells that's marked out belonged to Mrs Joseph Plunkett, i.e. Grace Gifford or Gifford, I've heard it pronounced both ways by Irish historians, so I honestly don't know what the correct option is. She famously came to the jail to marry Joseph Plunkett seven hours prior to his execution. They get married in this chapel here. You might know the song Grace, which is inspired by the story of them and their marriage. And there's actually a piece of art outside the jail on this box. It has his portrait on one side, hers on the other, and the Let This Moment Linger line from that song quoted on the side of it. She returned to the jail in 1923 as a prisoner herself and within her cell, if you look through, you can see a mural on the wall. She did the original drawing in crayons. She was an artist by trade. You can see that she lists herself as that on their wedding certificate. The jail did fall into ruin before it was restored, so this isn't actually her work, but it's a careful reproduction of her work. We then went outside, we saw the yard where the executions by firing squad took place. Most of the 1916 leaders were executed on this spot. James Connolly was shot on the other side of the yard at this spot. He was brought in by ambulance, brought in a different way rather than being brought out from the jail to face his execution. And he was tied to his chair with rope because he was too ill to even sit upright, never mind stand. There was an exhibition at the end with different objects. Um, I definitely thought I'd taken more pictures of than I apparently did, but a lot of them were very moving. The whole tour in general was very, very moving, so I think I just probably wasn't in the headspace for photographing things. But I did get this one of a medical box thought to have belonged to Dr Lennon, being used by her during the 1916 Rising. It should be noted, of course, that although a lot of the tour is focused on 1916, and those are probably the most famous of the prisoners that the jail has held. It held thousands of prisoners over its time as a standard county jail before it was a military prison. Robert Emmett, who led the 1803 rebellion, was held here before he was executed. And after we left the jail and we were walking to St Patrick's Cathedral, we actually passed by the spot where his execution took place. Then we went for lunch, so my plan had been to go to Meltdown again, but because of Covid there's not really anywhere to sort of sit and take a break um, around most of the sort of tour, like Kilmealing was guided tour only and it was one way system and there wasn't any like resting spots or anything, so my grand was really tired by the time we'd done the whole tour and whatever, so we ended up at the Patriots Inn which is just literally just outside um, the entrance and uh, had sandwiches there which was not glamorous but actually very good. <laughs> um, then we went to St Patrick's Cathedral so I will insert some bits from there. St Patrick's was beautiful inside. There was so much incredible stained glass but one of the things I thought was the most interesting was this door with a hole in the middle of it. So the story behind it is that there were two families at war and the butlers who were losing fled to the cathedral to claim sanctuary. The Fitzgeralds advanced but proposed a truce. 
The butlers, safe inside the cathedral, didn't trust it, so Gerald Fitzgerald ordered a hole cut in the door and from outside he thrust his arm through it and said, you can either shake my hand or cut it off. Thus, peace was made. And it's through this story that we get the phrase to chance your arm, which is a phrase I personally never really questioned the origin of. And after that, yeah, I went a little wander of the shops and then went for dinner. And I think that's my new favourite restaurant ever. I think that has just unseated the Gramercy Tavern in New York as being my number one. Highly, highly recommend the Winding Stain if you're coming to Dublin. So I have come to the winding stair for dinner tonight. So for my starter, I'm going to have this clotted thing go pay crab. And then for my main, I think I'm going to go for the venison, wild with the venison. Cabbage, pancetta, pearl onions, quince, and potatoes. Well, I'm tempted by the turkey though. I'm sort of between the two. This is a glass of strawberry wine made in Wicklow, which is just next to Dublin. Very excited. I tried it and it's lovely, but it's very strawberry-ish. You could completely forget you were drinking wine. Like you could so easily just down a full bottle of that thinking it's just like a sort of strawberry flavoured soft drink. But it's very pleasing. I also got a ginger beer and some water. So this is my crab. I like crab, I'm very excited about this. That is um, basically what we call an empty plate. Other than a bit of bread that I have left because I'm actually ridiculously full and I don't know how I'm going to manage my main course. That was delicious. Changed my mind at the last minute and went for the turkey. I'm very excited about this. It looks good.
I am going to take off whatever is left of my makeup um, and then I'm going to have a bath. So I got a bubble bar from Lush. It's called the Cinnamon Scroll and it's like cinnamon and warm and clovey and spicy and I think it's going to be a really nice relaxing one to have before bed. It's turning my water all red, very Christmassy. 